Welcome to another episode of this shitty podcast. So, I um, came across this article while I was perusing the Daily Mail, as I often do, before I come and ramble about stuff that I see in the news on here. Well, Donald Trump boasts he's leading in early voting and brands Joe Biden a criminal as Michigan crowd calls for Governor Gretchen Whit- Whitmire, who was almost kidnapped, to be locked up as he begins a intense three-day campaign. Okay, so even Joe Biden's campaign is warning him that Trump can still win because the numbers favoring the Democrats are inflated. Also, uh, government... Whit- uh, government Whitmire, she um, grossly overstepped her actual level of authority with the lockdown in Michigan and her trying to tell people that they can't go in and buy certain things at a store. It's like, okay, look, you don't have that power as the governor, okay? It's unconstitutional. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, even though I don't have the constitution memorized. But, The point of me bringing this up is people are acting like it's a done deal that Donald Trump is not going to be elected president and Joe Biden is going, there's no way Joe Biden can lose. the, the, The parallels between this and the 2016 election are just unbelievable. Like you have the democratic party who it's just my opinion that the Democrats have turned into a echo chamber and everybody's parroting. They think that Trump is deplorable. So who would ever vote for Donald Trump? Because the morally correct thing to do is to vote for Joe Biden. Now you have to divorce yourself of this for this reason. I, I really do believe that there is a strong possibility that Donald Trump will win the election. Um, For better or worse, I I try to stay away from this kind of stuff in my personal life. That's why I like talking about it on um, my podcast. Because I can say things that I can't say in real life. Like, everybody... A lot of people are acting like Joe Biden is just objectively a better choice than Donald Trump, at least at my work. And, you know, I I tend to be a third party guy. I don't really like the teamsmanship, but I have a lot of, I hate that. Yeah, that's really what I hate about politics is the team aspect of it. The team mentality that I vote Democrat, no matter what, I vote Republican, no matter what, because I I just think it's an objectively bad way, but I kind of find myself leaning more right as the left goes into lunacy left territory with uh, 67,000 gender pronouns. I was talking to a comedian and I said, did you hear the 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 Bill Burr bit and Saturday Night Live and he said no so I started explaining to him what he was saying and he goes you know the the thing is is Bill Burr I'm sure it was funny because he's a funny guy but he doesn't need to be giving his cis gendered white male opinion on this and this is another white guy and I'm like okay this is everything that is is wrong with stand up comedy in the woke culture in general. Like, I, I, you know, fuck it, I don't care. There's nobody that I do stand-up with really is going to hear this. But there is a lot of, in the, and I'm still new, so I'm not that good. But in the, in the, in the Tampa community, it seems like there are a lot of people that instead of just concentrating on what's funny, or you can have a funny political bit that leans towards your party 
if you're making fun of the other party because it makes no sense. And to be perfectly honest with you, there is a bunch of things about the Republican Party that don't make sense, as there is a bunch of things about the Democratic Party that don't make sense. My bit on it was, it seems like everybody in America is for freedom, unless it's freedom in a way that doesn't align with their political views. So, but... There was a feature that went up at this open mic and he was just God awful. So far left, super woke, and it just wasn't funny. And the entire audience was, uh, was, you know, just not even paying attention to the guy. And I'm sure in his head, he just said it was a bad crowd, but I went up earlier in the night and had a great set. It's just that, you know, it seems like the, the, the ideology has even infected stand-up comedy out here to the point where I just go out <coughs> and I just hear woke bullshit half the time when people are up on stage. And I'm like, you know, not at, there's ways to make Donald fun of Donald Trump that are objectively funny to both parties. Um, there, but... It, it just seems to me that we've regressed to the point where the Democrats are more guilty of this than the Republicans. The Democrats have regressed to the position of living in their own echo chamber. It's exactly what happened in 2016. Joe Biden, when you actually, oh, I know what I was going to say. Sometimes people will vote for a party on an issue that they thought that is important to them, like say gun control or abortion. And that's the preeminent why, reason why they vote for that party. Other people, it's different reasons. So people have to stop acting like if you're voting for Donald Trump, you're a bad person because Donald Trump or Joe Biden, you might just look at it and you go, okay, well, Biden 10 years ago was a better choice. But at this point, it's clear that he has a diminished mental faculty. And really, the real president is going to be Camilla Harris. That's how this is working. It's a backdoor. It's, it's an obvious backdoor to get a strong female of color into the White House. Which, to me, if Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is the party of anti-racism, why are you putting such emphasis on a superficial feature about her. You know, it should just be objectively about her accomplishments and she's the most qualified person to lead the country. But we're back to, look, um, I, I think there's a strong possibility that Donald Trump takes the election. People are looking at me. People are, nobody listens to this podcast, so I just say what I want anyways. But, you know, when I'm at work, people act like there's no possible way that Donald Trump can win. And I get it. You don't like Donald Trump. But <clears throat> this is the problem, to use a different analogy. Um, it, it, it's the problem that I speak about oftentimes. Your arguing for the world you want instead of the arguing for the world that exists. You see no scenario in your head. You see no reason why Joe Biden can't beat Donald Trump. But what you're not factoring in is as a guy who's just, it's really tough to get a read on me about what my politics are. Everybody knows I'm really right wing about the second amendment. I'm fiscally conservative. I don't like what's going on with the Fed and the printing of the dollar. I think we should be on a gold standard because the fiat currency system is the currency of war. That's what a fiat currency is for. It's for war. But you can imagine no scenario. And it's, that's how you wake up surprised. Like what? Donald Trump? He won? But how is that possible? 
everybody around me was saying that Donald Trump is the worst person that ever existed and that he cannot possibly retake the White House. And it, it, it's like I sit back on both sides and I'm like, there is a strong possibility it can go either way. And that's what you have to do and you have to, you have to step back. And so I'll give you an example. When I get my house, so I'm buying a house. One of the first things that I'm going to do to my house is sheepdog it. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take the, the normal screws that hold in a door out, put in longer ones so they go into the frame. The reason being, it makes that door a lot harder to kick down. I'm going to install a chain and a deadbolt on it, okay? So, I don't know who's at the door. I answer the door, the chain's there. They can't force their way in. But why would you do that? Because I can envision a scenario where somebody tries a home invasion. I can just picture that scenario in my head. Why would you think like that? Well, have they happened? I'm going to be putting film over the windows so that it makes it a lot harder for you to throw something through that window, be it a rock or be it a stun grenade because the, the cops wrongly got some wrong information and they decided to raid my house. Now my door is a lot harder to get through, okay? So it's like I can imagine, well, why would you think like that? It's like my uncle asking me, why would I need a firearm? And me just looking at him like, you really can't imagine a scenario where a bad person is after you. You can't imagine any scenario where you might need a weapon. I, I, I just, again, you live in the world the way you want it to be instead of the world the way it is. And that's why I truly believe come November 4th or whenever they're done counting the ballots, there's going to be a big gasp in this country when I, I honestly see it going Donald Trump's way. I just really do. Because the people on the left pushed their ideals on the right too hard. And everybody saw it. The censorship, right here's a Facebook article. Mark Zuckerberg told Facebook engineers to tweak its al algorithm to throttle traffic to certain news websites according to the report okay all of this is becoming more and more laid bare that you know the demo well i shouldn't say the democrats I, I hate when you but the super far lefties that have invaded tech they want to be able to censor your thoughts and they want to tell you how you think and can you can think and control the narrative the left has become extremely authoritarian. And it's something that I noticed that I get from left-wingers a lot. And that is, you know, why do you need a gun? And you're like, yeah, I don't have to explain to you in a free society why I need anything. I'm sitting right here and I have my tomahawk in my hand as we're talking because this thing is just so awesome and I talk about it all the time. But I don't need to explain to you personally. You're not in a position of authority. See, I, I, a lot of lefties that I that I speak to, they people are going to be like this dude's hardcore right wing and I'm like I'm not. I'm socially very liberal. I think that, you know, that I it, it's a, it's a position I've had for a long time like the, on the gay marriage thing, why is the government even in the business of marriage? I, I don't get it, okay? The government is there to make sure everybody plays fair and nobody is taking advantage of other people. Other than that, it should be, oh, two guys want to get married, smoke meth, they're not hurting anybody, they should be able to do that. That's an extremely left-wing way of thinking. But it's something that I've noticed as of late, where a left-wing person, if I don't express the exact um, 
phrase du jour of the moment. If I'm not to, if I'm not speaking in their code language, they want to tell me how to speak and how to think. And I look at people and I go, listen, I'm going to explain this to you in a couple of ways. There's real authority and then there's perceived authority. Now, real authority is authority by a police officer to arrest you, uh, authority by a uh, boss to fire you or discipline you. Um, that's real authority, okay? Then there's your perceived authority. And that is, you think that you get to dictate to me how I, how I think or speak about an issue. And I'm like, okay, but you have no actual authority to make me do that. And then it always inevitably comes, well, you're going to do it or in some way they'll hurt me. And I'm like, this always comes down to violence. Now, you know, I, I had to tell a buddy once when we were arguing, he was getting fought, my one buddy who got fired up about guns. I'm like, Ryan, you, I looked right at him. I said, you can't physically intimidate me. Okay. So you can knock that nonsense off right there that you're going to act as some bastion of authority that's going to correct me. Because I told him, I was like, I'll slap the shit out of you. And, you know, it's like, it's like I said, there's men that can make me eat crow and there's men that can't. And that's actual real authority. Um, but a lot of the lefties have started to think for some reason that they're the gold standard of uh, moral authority in the world and that anybody that doesn't feel the same way as them is somehow a lesser being that needs to be... Uh, it needs to be corrected or corralled in the proper way of thinking. And I think that that's going to lead to a major backlash because you have people of my parents' generation that have said this to me straight up. They're like, I'm done being lectured by a bunch of kids about the way the world is. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. And I think it's going to be reflected in the polls. Ah, I'm going to back a lefty now. Just so you don't think that I've gone uber right wing on you. So, Bill Maher was slammed. Hold on a second. This is going to pause for a second. Okay, I'm back. And, okay, so Bill Maher is slammed for saying that Democrats should make an issue of Amy... Cohen Barrett's Catholicism because being nuts is relevant. Now, he got a lot of backlash on it. So, let me parse this out. My belief is that in a free society, you're entitled to whatever beliefs that you want to have as long as that doesn't <clears throat> mean that you're out hurting people or calling for somebody to be hurt because you just don't like them. They're not of the same religion of you as you. But other than that, I think that you should be allowed to have whatever wacky beliefs that you want to have about the world, about the creation of the world, how we got here. If you want to believe that the earth is 6,000 years old and that uh, the world started with Adam and Eve, I mean, I'm 100% for it. If you're a Muslim or whatever wacky uh, superstition that you have because that's what I think religion is for organized is for the most part I don't, I don't know what happens after you die any more than any other human being running around on the planet has I hope there's something after that's so wondrous that I cannot imagine it in my current corporeal form but Bill Maher <clears throat> although the way he addresses is addresses it is probably not the best way is entirely correct on this. I, I agree with him to about 80%. And that is your religious beliefs are somewhat of an issue when you're in a position to make laws or you know, back a law as constitutional and you're basing your beliefs on your religion. 
I don't think that anybody should be able to have the state enforce rules that are based on <clears throat> another person's religion. I, I, I think that is just a dangerous way to view the world. And I also think it, it it's, uh, how is that fair to me? That, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry. How is that fair to me? That, you know, this woman can, I don't know if she's going to do it. I don't know what Amy Cohen Barrett's beliefs are. I'm just parsing this out as a generalization of how I view religious people in positions of authority and power. Right. It's my belief that, okay, if you said, it's my belief that life begins at conception. Okay, why? Because of my religion. Okay, not relevant. Anytime that, you know, we're talking about making a rule and when I, a law, and when I ask you, okay, what's the impetus for this? And you tell me it's because of your religion, I'm going to immediately discount it and say, okay, yeah, you're fine to live by that, but you're not fine to enforce that on me. But this is right. No, it's not. I don't agree with it. I don't agree to the law. I don't, you, know, you shouldn't be able to smoke weed because it's against my religion. Well, I don't really care about your religion. I, I point this out to people all the time. When somebody says, well, you know, it says this in the Bible. I go, I don't care. It do that doesn't matter to me. So, although Mr. Marr didn't execute this properly, I kind of agree with a lot of the sentiment, sentiment of it. Um, you can make a case. It, it, you can look at it like this. What do we do to somebody who commits a horrible act? Chris Watts, for instance. He's running around and he's saying, um, you know, I, I did this horrible act, but it wasn't really me. It was the devil working through me because I opened myself to the devil by engaging in prostitution and smoking of the devil's cabbage. Now, the devil's lettuce, whatever you want to call it. Now, we'll look at that person and you just go, that person's nuts. And you outwardly dismiss him. Say, like, what are you talking about? The devil made you do it. I don't understand why the same level of what are you talking about isn't applied to God. You, you have, before the Iraq war, you have... Uh, George Bush up on, which I actually believe that George Bush is religious, but I, I hate to tell this to a lot of religious people. Um, a lot of politicians are religious only because, only to build trust with you. Because for some reason, being religious has become a, a, a stand-in for being a moral person. Like you're automatically, you have some level of moral a higher level of morality than me because you go to an arbitrary building on Sunday and you read from a book that was written 2,000 years ago and you, you share in your superstition and somehow you're more moral than me because I don't go there, right? Except I'm not fleecing my constituents of their money, engaging in backroom deals, but Like I said, you should be free to practice your religion. Oh, I know what I was going to say. It's like George Bush, right before the invasion. I don't know if I'm repeating myself now, but George Bush, right before the invasion, he he's up there on stage and he says, you know, I prayed long and hard and God told me this is the right decision to make. And then people went, oh, okay. God told him to do it. God's with us. If God's with us, who could be against us? And... There you have it. That is in a crux. My view on religion is, if I if he said this to me, he said, God told me after I prayed, I go, can you prove that? And what does that have to do with anything? How do I know that voice you didn't hear in your head is a sign of schizophrenia kicking in? 
Like I'm just automatically supposed to go with whatever thought that you had in your head and not parse it out and figure out if this is the best, most judicious course of action because an imaginary magic man in the sky, you claim, you can't prove is there, but you claim told you that we should go to war. I mean, you see how ridiculous the, even the idea of this is in 2020. And like I said, have whatever, you know, view, worldview, as you want to call it. What's your worldview when they're trying to play their apologetics tricks on you? Go to church on Sunday. I don't even have a problem with you holding office. I just have a problem with you trying to write rules that will affect my life based on your religion. And like I said before, I don't know that Amy Cohen Barrett is going to do that. I know plenty of religious people that separate their religion from their job. So that shouldn't, but it should be somewhat of a litmus test in my opinion. It's like, okay, man, look, I get it. Your religion means a lot to you. But are you going to be making rules based on it for the rest of us? Because that's essentially what she's going to be doing. You know, overturning Roe v. Wade and making abortions illegal is not really a practical thing. And really, the only per people, the only people that are hurt by uh, outlawing abortion are poor people. Rich people still have abortions no matter what. Now, I don't, I think Roe v. Wade is such a contentious thing on both sides that we just have to come to an agreement. You know, okay, here's how we're going to do the abortion thing. You can have abortions up until this point. After that, it's a C-section. We're putting the baby in an incubator and we're going to have it adopt. We're going to have somebody adopt it. But you can't go in, in my opinion, this is my humble opinion. Do eight month old babies survive out of the womb? Uh, yeah, they do. So um, you, as funny as it is to make jokes about it, in my real life view, I don't think that you can just take that baby and throw it in a blender. Um, but, I mean, the, the, the practicality of just outlawing all abortion is, I, I just don't think it's, I don't, I just don't think it's a practical uh, thing. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to do tonight because, um, quite frankly, I still have a hangover at this point. I don't know how I got it. I, well, I got it from drinking, but I powered through the day. And I'm just not feeling a longer podcast. I'll probably do a longer one tomorrow night. So if you listened or watched on YouTube, thanks. If not, I don't know what to tell you. Like and subscribe or whatever.